it does an excellent job. So what I did is I changed the mean up here and I dropped it here and I changed the variance up here, dropped it here, changed the autocorrelation in these different places. And it is very good at identifying the breakpoints. This is the output of that particular model. And these colors reflect the autocorrelation coefficient. Um, so um, this is this method applied to a track of a first seal. Um, and the basic story is that there's a lot of behavioral things going on in there. There's a lot of changes. Um, and one thing that is of interest is that in its sort of outward migration, again, brighter colors are higher autocorrelations, um, it's almost more in the autocorrelation than necessarily even in the magnitude of the velocity that you can tell that it's having an outward migration. And then there's some sort of a, a switch to sort of, sort of random behavior during this day where it might be sleeping. We sleep usually during the day and they activate. I don't know if you can see very well, but there's this uh, night is reflected in sort of darker shades here in these purple bars. Um, so, and then it activates at night, but the searching behavior is much more random than traveling behavior. And there's all sorts of nuances inside of there. And if you're aware of and interested in what it's possibly doing, there's lots of ways to interpret this kind of data. But that's a distillation of this complicated, gappy data set, which otherwise isn't very clear how to analyze it. So, um, just a couple more plots. There, there are, you know, there are models out there that have sort of correlated random walks switching between one movement, one kind of behavior, and another kind of behavior, traveling and foraging, and some probabilities of that transition. And so that would be um, sort of this is a um, that would be well, this is uh, a phase plot of behaviors. So this is like means. These are variances, and the size of these circles are applied against the autocorrelations. So we see that when it travels, it's at a high speed, highly autocorrelated. It has a sort of sudden switch here. So some sort of something else is going on, something else is going on here. The dark things are night, the light ones are day. And I thought, well, maybe I can find some patterns in here. And um, it's basically, the only thing I can say about this is that it's really complicated. Behaviors are really complicated. And if we had to sort of switching to behavior model, we'd have you know, a point here and a point here. And you'd be missing out on a lot going on. Um, and there's, so this is one trip, this is the, the seventh trip, you know, he's moving really fast the whole time, and maybe she like stopped to like forage here and search, didn't find anything, kept searching around, and like you turned and just booked back home. You know, so there's a lot of information in these kinds of analyses potentially, but it's bewildering. Um, we can distill this into just seeing what happens, what are the distributions of these parameters. So these are like the speeds. And these are violin plots, the reason I choose violin plots instead of box plots is you can see sort of um, an idea of what the distribution looks like. You can see that there's kind of trip two or all these trips, they have like clumps of behavior. There is sort of a tendency to have one, a higher velocity or lower velocity. Um, and higher autocorrelations and lower autocorrelations. Um, and so that distills to some extent the sort of behavioral complexities. And I thought there might be more of a night day shift. But, but the point is, so the final chords of this movement are behavior can be very complex, but these patterns can be picked out out of even very messy data. And um, the method suggests the possibility of asking more specific questions. So we just started this first seal. I did this analysis in the first seals in um, this spring. Um, but there's all this accessory data. We can see what it's doing relative to its foraging success, which is that is very rare data. I mean, it actually has temperature sensors. Somewhere in some computer there, there's like, oh, here's where it succeeded. And you can see, how does this behavior correlate to actual success? Um, and diving behaviors, and all sorts of different things. And we can sort of start aggregating all sorts of information. And of course, this kind of data is very widely collected. And depending on the, you know, the problem you're working at, a lot can be learned. So that was the second movement.